As usual, when reviewing a PlayStation VR 2 update of a PSVR 1 game, I'm going to use the original PSVR 1 review as a base and update it as needed. So put your feet up and let's go back to 2021 and listen to a better, happier, more productive. Brian Paul, talk about Windlands 2 for a minute. Back in 2016, when a lot of VR devs were wary of motion sickness, developer SciTech Games took a pretty big risk by releasing their first-person platformer Windlands on the same day as the PlayStation VR headset itself. Where so many early VR games forced you to either stand in one place, teleport, or sit in a cockpit, Windlands gave you complete freedom to run, jump, and incredibly, swing around the world with grappling hooks in first person. It was an incredibly liberating experience, and one that forced me to get my VR legs in a hurry. But without any enemies, combat, or multiplayer options, when things got difficult, there were few incentives to carry on, which means that very few VR gamers saw this one all the way to the end. I know we're not reviewing Windlands 1 here, but since this is probably the last time we're going to talk about the series for a while, I might as well get this out while I can. Windlands 1 was game-changing, and the more distance we get from its launch, the more clearly we can see what an important title it was. Even here in 2024, some developers are scared to release games with jumping or climbing or even full locomotion because they want literally everyone to be able to play their games. But you know what they say, when you try to make everyone happy, you end up making no one happy. Luckily, Windlands 2, which is only about three years late to PSVR, sets out to change all of that with a fuller, more robust gaming experience. Like the first game, you venture out into big open worlds. You can run and jump like in a traditional platformer, but more than anything, you'll be using the grappling guns to swing around the environment, finding creative ways to get from place to place. This is all true, but I swear it's way easier on PSVR 2 to run at top speed, jump, and hit your grapple points. Part of that might just be my experience with Windlands 2, having played it from start to finish twice back on PSVR 1, but there's no getting around it. The sense controllers are just way more equipped to handle all this stuff than the light-tracked, analog stickless move controllers were. A lot of sections will require you to have built up momentum, so the sooner you learn to alternate hands and swing at top speeds, the better. There are a ton of collectibles to find which will slow you down along the way, 120 in total. And if you're a platinum trophy hunter, you can ignore me when I say Windlands 2 takes about 7 hours to beat. I didn't even find a third of the collectibles during my first playthrough, not even close, so I can't even begin to imagine the countless number of hours it'll take to locate every last one of them. And for even more context, I always play through games on the normal default difficulty for reviews. This should be the most well-balanced version of the game, and I find that to be true for Windlands 2. But if you do want a real challenge, you can pump the difficulty up so that the bosses are harder, and you take fewer hits before having to respawn. And for those of you who just want to breeze through the game a bit easier, not worry as much about the bosses, and be able to grapple onto anything, there's options for you too. Possibly the best improvement over the first game, though, is that you can now play the full campaign with three friends online. And let me tell you that the inclusion of this option immediately changes everything. There are segments of Windlands 2 that ask you to find 10 items scattered around the area before continuing on your mission. And unless you're extremely patient, doing this alone and without a map gets tedious fast, and tracking down the last few had me screaming, where the f*** are they? But teaming up with friends actually makes it a lot of fun, as you spread out and try to take down that mission together. I could try to ding Windlands 2 for its absolutely ridiculous, seemingly broken character animations in multiplayer, but just like Arizona Sunshine before it, we were all laughing way too hard at each other for it to be a negative thing. I had all these feelings again when playing through Windlands 2 this week on PSVR 2. It's still worth playing through alone, but it's just much, much better with friends, and the in-game voice chat works great. It's also interesting to note that I didn't experience any of the strange character animations or the choppiness and lag from other players' movements this time around, that's fairly prominent in the original review from last gen. It's also super simple to get a game going, especially with drop-in, drop-out multiplayer and in-game voice chat. The one thing that bothered me this time around is that you've got to wait for everyone to show up in the lobby before starting the game. Once you're out of the lobby and into the game world, the lobby no longer shows up and you just can't join. It's a minor inconvenience until your game crashes or it loses connection to the internet, each of which happened once during my playthrough. And then you've got to somehow communicate to your team to restart the game and join the new lobby. There is cross-platform play here though, and that mostly makes up for it. The other big improvement Windlands 2 offers up is combat. With just a pull of a trigger, you can summon up a bow and arrow, and dude, learning to master the controls in order to feel comfortable enough with grappling around an enemy and firing off shots in midair takes some time, but it's ultimately one of the most satisfying feelings you can have in VR. There are small enemies that can be taken down with just a shot or two, and quite a few boss fights that take upwards of 10 minutes to defeat. And again, strategizing and communicating with three other people makes these moments so much more fun. 
Luckily, you can die as many times as it takes to get the job done, and you and your teammates will just keep respawning without losing any of your progress. Not to be descent to the ground, but the sense controllers improve the entire experience. Now you can use the grip on either hand to bring up your bow, and use the trigger for grappling. I expected a lot more from the controller haptics, which are used sparingly, although the headset does get a slight rumble when moving at top speeds to simulate wind effects. It's okay, nothing to write home about. And the advertised adaptive trigger support doesn't seem to be implemented here either, but honestly, I don't think this should be considered a negative. I realized over time just how tired my fingers would get if I had to fight the triggers every time I shot off a grappling hook. Once you've completed the campaign, you'll probably be good enough to start tackling the challenges, which come in two types. The first type is a straight race to the finish line, and the other is a timed collectathon. Both are extremely difficult, and even just figuring out the correct path to the finish line will take a few attempts. So get ready for some frustration here while you learn the maps. I will say though that not everything came together here seamlessly. Windlands 2 contains quite a few segments that are insanely difficult, where it feels like the developers, when making the level, had spent a thousand hours with their game, and kind of expect that you've done the same. These areas feel like challenge maps, but they're not. They're part of the campaign and will require a ton of patience as you learn exactly when and where to grapple, how long to hold on for, when to release the hook, and what platforms you can and cannot land on. When I say that some of these areas took me upwards of 40 attempts to complete, it's not an exaggeration. Windlands 2 is the Dark Souls of VR platformers. None of this is made any easier with a jump button that only seems to work about half the time and sent me careening off a cliff to my death more times than I could count. This jump button issue actually got patched back on PSVR 1, and thankfully, wasn't an issue on PSVR 2 either, which yeah, means I was dying way, way less this time around. And I have to say that, even though SciTech Games attempted to infuse Windlands 2 with NPCs in a story, neither one are worth writing home about. I'm pretty sure I can carry the weight. Bosses and enemies are reused throughout the entire game, and although most of the environments look good and have a great draw distance, they all look a little too similar. Which means by the end of the game, I was desperate for some variety. Yeah, listen, I like the look of Windlands too, but it does all kind of look the same to a certain degree, even with the switch from forest biomes to deserts to jungles, etc. And while you can see for miles with a pretty much limitless draw distance, for whatever reason, I expected the PSVR 2 version to be razor sharp, and it's not. I don't know if this is just a result of heavy anti-aliasing or what. It's not blurry. The edges of everything are just kind of soft. It took Windlands 2 almost three years to make its way to PSVR, but I have to say that I think it showed up at just the right moment, during a time where we needed it the most. It's been a while, it's been a while. since we had a fun co-op campaign, and despite all the problems I encountered, none of them kept me from having a good time. Playing through in single player does feel a little lonely though, and all the frustrations are amplified when you don't have your friends nearby. So even though I think Windlands 2 is worth a purchase regardless, I'd highly suggest grabbing a few friends before heading out into these lands. Exactly. It took three years for the PlayStation VR 1 to get Windlands 2, but Windlands 2 showed up just when we needed it, during a time where new games were barely even trickling out on the platform. But things have changed over here with the release of PSVR 2, which has been getting slammed with new releases since launch, and that doesn't look like it's slowing down for the next six months or so. But somehow, Windlands 2, with its intense locomotion, fun bosses in combat, and four-player co-op, amazingly still has the chops to compete. 